back the week, I'm John Bean. Joining me this week, sitting in as a very late replacement for an unwell Andy Parsons. Get well, Andy. We have Josh Widdicombe. Josh, thank you very much. Also, Ed Byrne and Chris Ramsey, Chris Anderson, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We start with a round call if this is the answer. What is the question on the board of six categories? Chris, which category would you like? Sport, please. OK, the category is sport. The answer is mm -hmm. 736. What is the question? Um, is, it, uh, is it Tom Daly's bedtime? <laughs> <laughs> it, on which page of your home insurance does it say that they never pay out for anything ever? <laughs> How many hours in a row has Claire Balding now been awake for? <laughs> is it the only item at his local takeaway that Eamon Holmes hasn't ordered? <laughs> and that is spring water. Yeah. <laughs> is it how many people have seen Keith Lemon the movie? <laughs> oh, is it? Generous. Is it? Generous. <laughs> is it if you saw Pythagoras in concert, name one of the old numbers he might try and do. <laughs> Is it how many Cocoa Pops does Rain Man have for breakfast? <laughs> 736 Cocoa Pops. Yeah. 7, 736, 736 Cocoa Pops. <laughs> is it the number of Americans aware of the Paralympics? <laughs> is, it, is, is it what would uh, Emil Heskey's squad number be at Barcelona? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many energy saving light bulbs <laughs> do you have to turn on before you can change an ordinary one? <laughs> How many calories does the average man burn off while having a proper think about Jessica Ennis? That's a new phrase, a proper think. Uh... <laughs> There's nothing worse than when you get caught by your parents having a proper think, is there? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, thought you were I thought you were studying for your exams and no, <laughs> he was having a proper think. <laughs> It makes put a new complexion on go to your room and think about what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's going to be the correct answer. Okay. If you can. Uh, when reading the letters page of the Daily Mail, what year does it feel like it is? <laughs> <laughs> is it the amount of athletes that took part in the parade this week? Absolutely right. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Yes, the question I was looking for is how many Team GB athletes took part in the Olympic and Paralympic Victory Parade in London on Monday. According to the British Olympic Association, 736 athletes celebrated their record-breaking medal hall in front of over a million spectators. The Victory Parade was made up of 21 floats and featured a fly-past by the Red Arrows. Did you watch? What else can the Red Arrows do if they don't fly past? <laughs> Interesting. Presumably walk past in front yeah. of yeah. <laughs> yeah. We saw he loves the red arrows, doesn't he? Everybody really loves the red arrows. I think I th you think how much better people would feel about our unwanted intervention in other countries if we bombed them using the red arrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went to the Paralympics, it was very exciting. It was quite complex. You get used to because I didn't know anything about it. Mm. And the first race I watched was the um because you know that they had, had those grades, and so I watched the S6 swimming. And I was like, I, they said it, I was like, the Essex swimming? <laughs> I mean, I know that's frowned upon to be from Essex, but that is not a disability. <laughs> She's slightly slower, cos her bejazzle will hatch in the water. It's the front of the pool just looking like a weak gravy off all the false <laughs> I thought Lord Coe's, um speech. Oh, incidentally, I find Lord Coe, I think he, he actually, it's ironic that he, it sounds less posh when you call him Lord Coe than when you call him Sebastian. Because <laughs> <laughs> he downgraded. But, but he did that, he really hammered home the Made in Britain thing in his speech. It was all very stirring. You know, it's, a, it's a stamp of quality, it's a mark that you can see stamped on something. We stamped on this Olympics, you know, London 2012, Made in Britain, which I thought was slightly ironic considering Wenlock and Mandeville toys were all made in China. <laughs> I wondered if they, you know, I wondered if they're like... I, I feel, you know, the Olympics is over and we can all recover from it because we've got another four years, but I worry about Wenlock and Mandeville because that's it for them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Mandeville and Wenlock are going to break into the stadium, like, over the next... Just, and just sit in the silence and go... Special break. It's Wenlock! Yeah! <laughs> 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 we were... I think we were talking about... <laughs> 
good fruit here. Uh, People say they really enjoyed the Paralympics, but I didn't actually see a ghost. <laughs> in which the javelin appears to throw itself. <laughs> I, um, I was going to the Paralympics and I went... For, I had one of those lanyards that you have to have because I was working there. And I went for a fry-up at, at lunchtime and I was sat there and the guy came over and he said, ''Oh, what's that?'' I said, ''Oh, I'm going to the Paralympics in an hour.'' And he said, ''Oh, what are you competing in?'' <laughs> a, clearly I'm not a Paralympian, and B, as if I'd go, ''Well, I'll have a fry-up before I... <laughs> <laughs> The most astonishing thing about this summer is the number of just the huge roll call of new heroes. Like, just watching incredible humans. David Radish's world record breaking 800 metre run. That was astonishing. I just sat there watching him thinking, how does a human being learn to run 800 metres that quickly? And then you find out that he was trained by an Irish priest and you think, yep, yeah, that would do it. <laughs> Some things don't get medals at all. I get very upset by the fact that the, uh, in the show jumping and stuff, that horses don't get a medal. And in the dressage, they don't get a medal. And you look at the horse and you think, to be honest, I think the horse is doing most of the work. <laughs> don't you? It's no wonder, and in the show jumping, it's no wonder they knock all the fences over, because the horse is just thinking, well, what's in it for me? More than... <laughs> even, if, even if I go clear, I won't get a single vote in <laughs> sports personality of the year. <laughs> It's also very difficult if we have to text the number because they're big, they're big foot on the phone. It doesn't <laughs> really. <laughs> it's very, very rare that they have horse voting. And generally, if they do have horse voting, the nays have it. That's the best joke I've heard. Now we're starting. Now. You get into mad sports. There's things that you, I, I didn't really know. I didn't know about the steeplechase. Before, but that's now my favourite race on the track. It's, you just go around the track and then eventually someone puts, puts a big fence in your way, which you have to leap over into a pool of water and then off you go. It's like the crazy golf of the track. They should completely embrace that. I think there should be a, a little bit further along, there should be a windmill that you have to run through. <laughs> you have to avoid the sails <laughs> clashing in, big rotating Boris Johnson head halfway down the track. Just the mouth opening and closing. You're going, paw, 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 paw. <laughs> <laughs> I love the open water swimming. I thought that was great, the open water swimming. But I do think it was one of the very few events that Rio are going to do better. There's a lot more stuff in the water there. <laughs> did, you, did you actually watch the sailing at any stage? I did. Yeah. I, it was the one that I just couldn't... No, I, could, I have no that. idea what's it's going on right here. Like, oh, he's the first. Oh, he's seventh. Oh, he's ninth. Oh, he's fourteenth. <laughs> oh, he's disqualified. No, he's back in. No, wait. He's won. He's gold. It's a silver. Uh, <laughs> Same row of thing, like whatever. Like, randomly, somebody just you'd be watching, going, "Oh, there he goes, there he goes," and another boat would just go across. Like, there he goes. <laughs> oh, somebody's lost now. Uh, so. I was watching the Paralympic sailing, and I thought it was quite boring until I realised I was actually watching a repeat of three men in a boat. <laughs> I did think the broadcasting was generally excellent. I mean, at no point did I think that the BBC sent people along to events whose knowledge of the sport or whose ability to communicate that knowledge was ever in doubt. It was just top quality the entire way through. Look at the reaction of the Irish fans in attendance here at the XL Arena and what that signifies. There. I can't call this, this is too tight. <laughs> were you actually sent there by the BBC or do you two just carry a microphone around? <laughs> Me. He just, I had no idea that we were going to be handed microphones and have cameras pointed at us. He oh. said to me, do you want to go and see the boxing? And I went, yeah, sure, I'll go along. I don't know anything about sport. And then there's cameras on us. But and then he interviewed, and actually on TV, he goes to me, so have you been following the boxing? No, I haven't been following the boxing. <laughs> so when I knew that the, the, the thing is had the best chance of winning, an Irish 
Gold, oh, gold, yeah. Thingy. Was like, boxing. Was women's boxing. boxing. Yeah. We've got we've, we've That's four so boxing. so stereotypical, isn't it? Well, I'm sorry for That's living amazing. up to what it. Did, what did you get? <laughs> what did you get? Going, this is a disgraceful representation of no, Ireland. What, what, did you get, what did you get for drive tarmacking? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Well, well, well done on your medal for not wearing a coat on a night out. At the end of that round, the points go to Chris, Ed and Josh. <laughs> now we play a round called Daralympics. This game <laughs> involved Josh, Milton and Chris, so if you could make your way over to the performance area, please. This round is our stand-up challenge. I launch a wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first thing we did is holidays. Who wants to come in on that? Josh. Not very good holidays, uh, as it turns out. I bought a uh, tent to go camping recently. I don't know if you've, I've, I've not done this before. I bought a two-room tent. And then you get it home, and it turns out the two rooms they give you from your house are the bedroom and the porch. <laughs> I'll show you, if I was going to take two rooms from my house on holiday with me, very low on the list would be the porch. <laughs> I'll choose the bedroom and the bathroom. So not camping, never have I woken up at 4am and thought, I need to get to a porch. <laughs> if I don't get to a porch, there's going to be an accident. <laughs> if there was no porch on your tent, you wouldn't have an issue. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get your tent out and go, oh my god, no porch. <laughs> or where am I going to put my hat stand? <laughs> I've got a yellow pages and 84 pieces of junk mail, I need a porch on these things. <laughs> I, I never went on good holidays when I was a child. My dad was one of those people that was afraid of flying. He'd go, it's not natural, is it? Because if we were going to fly, we'd have wings. It's for birds, it's not for humans. But that's a terrible argument, isn't it? Because that's what technology is for. Helping you do things you couldn't do otherwise. If you give him a bottle of wine, he doesn't go, well, I'm not opening that because I don't have a curly finger. <laughs> Thank you very much, Josh. Well done. <laughs> OK, let's have the next subject, please. The next would be this communication. Who wants to come in on that? Chris. Hello. I, uh, yeah, communication now, these days, it's the more technologically advanced a form of communication, the more pointless and useless the subject matter is. For example, things like Twitter. You would never, it's not real communication. You would, you would never tweet someone to inform them of a death in the family. It'd be slightly, you know what I mean, a bit harsh. Dad's dead, hashtag fail. <laughs> At the same time, you wouldn't show up at someone's house unannounced in person to tell them you'd just had a nice sandwich. <laughs> Oi, mate, it's 11 at night. What's up? Just had a blinded toasty. <laughs> I'll see you at work. <laughs> what? <laughs> it is, I mean, the most pointless form of communication these days is it has to be YouTube comments. Wow. Just take a couple of hours out of your life, sit down and have a look through some YouTube comments. It's like scrolling through the mind of a psychopath. <laughs> It's, it's incredible, and I've got a game you can have to send them loopy, right? Go on to YouTube, find a video. It has to be unremarkable. It can't be anything amazing. It can't be a near-death experience. It has to be banal, boring and mundane, like a video of a cat yawning. <laughs> You're laughing, there's loads of them on there. People are insane, right? <laughs> video of a cat yawning, go on, underneath, sign in to YouTube, comment one word. Fake. <laughs> People lose their minds. How can it be fake? Cat yawning! Katyon! <laughs> she was tired! <laughs> Thank you very, very much, sir. <laughs> so that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. The subject is family. <laughs> <laughs> All my family are black and white. <laughs> I found my dad the other day. He said, you left the room before I finished speaking. I wanted you to go to Holland and Barrett and get me some tablets. Where are you now? I said, Holland. <laughs> <laughs> I always left the room before my dad finished speaking. I remember once he said, why don't you go outside and jump up and down on the trampoline? Except I didn't hear the Aline. <laughs> My grandfather, he eventually achieved his lifelong ambition to be a lion whisperer. 
<laughs> Just before he died. <laughs> Hashtag fail. <laughs> My mother, she's got to the stage now where all she does is go on about who's just died. Do you remember Muriel? <laughs> she's just died. <laughs> Do you remember Arthur? <laughs> He's just died. I said, Mum, get off the roof and give me the gun. <laughs> round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Mayor of London with the Prime Minister. But what does B-A-C-C -C stand for? Is it a before and after cosmetics commercial? <laughs> <laughs> is it the pointing at each other and just saying, basically, a complete cock? <laughs> <laughs> is it boring airport conversation continues? <laughs> <laughs> is it Boris, Boris saying, our hmm. education policy is as easy as B-A-C. <laughs> 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 Is it Boris just greeting Cameron in his normal way by going, Bountiful acclamations, Cameronius Caesar? <laughs> 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 Boris describing his life and he's just saying, Birds and cycling, cracking. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's banging all the Conservative chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Is it uh, the start of an alphabetical list of people who've benefited most from the Olympics? Boris and Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cameron taken one look at Boris and said, you know barbers accept credit cards? <laughs> Okay, we move towards the correct answer, can please? Is it, is, it, is it Boris and Cameron collide? Uh, actually, is it? No, Clash. it's not. <laughs> ah, sorry, Josh, what was that answer? Chris. Josh Chris, is sorry, there. Josh, Josh is there. <laughs> I'm sick! Ha <laughs> ha! I mean, how quickly do people boo you? Jesus! He's actually sick, he has a decency to not show up. <laughs> Sorry. Let's do it again. Sorry, Chris. Yeah. Is, is, it, is it Boris and Cameron clash? Very good. Well done, Chris. <laughs> Very good. Yes. yes. The answer I was looking for was Boris and Cameron clash. This is the news that Boris Johnson has declared war on David Cameron over Heathrow Airport's potential expansion. Johnson, who is against a third runway, labelled Cameron's indecision a fudgerama and simply mad in a row that overshadowed the Prime Minister's first full-scale ministerial reshuffle. What would Johnson rather see than a third runway? I don't know, but I know that Fujirama was a game they were forced to play at public school. <laughs> yeah. I involved a third runway as well, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wants an airport. He wants another airport in the Thames Estuary, doesn't he? Yes, he does. On, uh, on the thing which has been called Boris Island. Yes. Which is just fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Boris Island sounds like, just like a Jurassic Park. Just something that's, you know, to be quiet. The Borises will hear you rustling. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's found the, the DNA of a long dead 17th century baron in some amber and spliced it with a polar bear and brought these horrific creatures back to the <laughs> A piece of rope with no goat on the end of yeah. it. Uh oh, <laughs> the, the, large, the, the large Borises have escaped. Yeah. <laughs> they hunt in packs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise Heathrow only had two runways. Yeah. It's got four terminals. I presumed it would have loads of runways. It's got five terminals. It's got, it's got ten Wagamamas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a Japanese restaurant than an airport. The international the Wagamama to, to runway ratio is out of whack. More out of whack for Hito <laughs> yeah. than any international airport. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the first I read of it, there was a headline that said, um, Cameron plans U-turn on Heathrow runway. <laughs> that yeah. isn't health and safety. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Goldsmith, Zach Goldsmith said that he'll resign as an MP if they go ahead with the third runway. And I thought, what will he do for money? The <laughs> <laughs> name is Zach Goldsmith. He's <laughs> anti Heathrow and he doesn't really seem committed to a career in politics. Because either way, he's just not in it for the long haul. 
Thank you. Oh! Good to see you, Dave. Yeah, a, I've never heard that. That's amazing. That was like that was like a cattle market. <laughs> <laughs> How did Cameron do his uh, reshuffle this week? He sat down and had a proper think about it. <laughs> The hard thing about, about when um, Cameron did the, uh, uh, they had one of those things, they picked a word, because Cameron apparently when he did the reshuffle, he was, I don't know which of the ministry he was dealing with, but apparently he was drinking a glass of wine mm. uh, at the time, which became swilling. <laughs> he was yeah. swilling wine. I'm not sure what exactly, that's yeah, like a that... trough. They go, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> yeah, they were trying to imply that he enjoyed it and he was denying it, but he clearly had a semi on. <laughs> oh, very good. That is a very good wine joke. Uh, Except it was, that's a white grape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, <laughs> so. It was a, it was a strange feature of those in terms of the people they chose. I mean, oh. he chose a health minister yeah. who believes in homeopathy uh, and a transport manager who was afraid of flying. Yeah. And you might as well have gone, uh, like, uh, we need somebody for fisheries. Who's here from the Midlands? Uh, <laughs> Possibly a Chancellor of the Exchequer who knows nothing about economics. Oh, hang on. When it comes to the Cabinet, you'd rather be in opposition. Because when you think about it, which would you rather be? A member of the Cabinet or a member of the Shadow Cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> But it sounds like some the puppet masters. <laughs> the cabinet think they run the country, yeah, but, but really the shadow cabinet. <laughs> I don't think we should use the term shadow cabinet because it makes it sound a lot cooler than what it is, which is a bunch of grown men pretending to have a job they don't have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I owe you a debt of thank, uh, thanks, by the way, uh, because, um, you know, you bought me a present recently from your holidays, which... Uh, oh, I, you, have you brought it in? I have brought it so it's really, really <laughs> sweet. Ed uh, was in France on his holidays and bought me a present of a thermometer. You know when you get a present you go, oh, yeah, thanks, yeah, that's great, and really, I, I really appreciate that thermometer you bought me. And genuinely, for two weeks, I had no idea why Ed had bought me a thermometer. But it, apparently, apparently it has a vague um, kind of resemblance... Uh, <laughs> They didn't give me a hat to do this. Uh, so, <laughs> and the, but wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Oh, there we go. There, there we go. go. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the point is Chris, Ed, and Josh. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So, if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is unlikely complaints to TV channels. Dear Jim, will fix it. Why aren't you replying to me letters? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Living TV, stop breathing on me, you're freaking me out. <laughs> I find it extremely offensive that after each scene we'd like to see, the host, Dara O'Brien, appears to emit a loud fart. <laughs> <laughs> Dear BBC, why have you given Andy Parsons that ridiculous wig this week? <laughs> BBC, I, I recently saw something on the Antiques Roadshow I would like to purchase. <laughs> How much is Fiona Bruce? <laughs> Dear Dragon's Den, I have lost my keys, and for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> Dear ITV, I just watched Loose Women in High Definition. Please remove this option. <laughs> Dear Bait Station, sorry for the scrawl, I'm having to write this with my left hand. <laughs> Dear Babe Station, 
I've watched your channel for 10 hours now and I've yet to see a film about a pig working as a sheepdog. <laughs> However, I shall persevere. <laughs> Channel 5. I have watched Celebrity Big Brother. I think it should be renamed Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> Dear BBC, why don't you get Irish comedian Ed Byrne to do a documentary about ladies' pants? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Dave, <laughs> have you seen Phil? Yours, Bob. <laughs> Dear Embarrassing Bodies, I'm a man trapped inside a woman's body. I uh, got mixed up between superglue and lube. <laughs> Dear Dave Jarvu, have you seen Phil Jarvu? Yours, Bob Jarvu. <laughs> Dear BBC, where can I get one of those blurred number plates you always see on television? <laughs> Dear Embarrassing Bodies, I think there may be something wrong with my penis. I've enclosed it in an envelope for you to <laughs> Dear BBC, why have you changed the name of Snog Mary Avoid to Three Men in a Boat? <laughs> OK, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear in a survival show. Not all of us survived last night's tropical fruit juice storm. <laughs> Five alive. <laughs> At last, I have found some nuts and some berries. I hate it when they rearrange the aisles at Asda. <laughs> <laughs> we dropped Piers Morgan and Jeremy Clarkson into a remote area of the Amazon rainforest with no supplies and no means of contacting the outside world. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> there are many threats to the children of the Nabutu tribe. Crocodiles, snakes, Madonna. <laughs> Unfortunately, you do have to improvise some things. I've been using these leaves for wiping my bottom, which is why I've been thrown out of the salad bar. <laughs> And uh, to make this wigwam, I just used three poles. Cos, well, they're good workers and they're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible moment when your fellow mountaineer turns to you and says he's got his arm stuck in a crevasse and you're going to have to cut it off. And then when he comes round, he says, no, not that one. <laughs> Everyone in this gorilla's family has a role. Unfortunately, I'm his love bitch. <laughs> If you're really lost, it's time to use your Duke of Edinburgh skills. Hopefully, you can offend the indigenous tribes people <laughs> enough that they'll chase you out of the forest. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to make a snare, just in case, God forbid, you ever have to improvise a jazz-style drum solo. <laughs> Perhaps the most rewarding thing about looking at the women of the Nabutu tribe is they have their tits out. <laughs> Yesterday I punctured my inflatable, which is terrible. There isn't a sex shop for miles. <laughs> so I'm at home and there's a eight for anaconda snake coming through the letterbox. I think it's some kind of Amazon mix-up. <laughs> Tonight on Bushcraft, the Vajazzle. <laughs> <laughs> OK, And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Josh Whittaker, Ed Byrne and Chris Ramsey. <laughs> Commiserations to Chris Allison, Hugh Dennis and Mick and Jones. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Darby. Good night. Stephen Fry's making us smile tomorrow at 10. QI's back for a jamboree with the letter J with Jimmy Carr. 
And with Rob Brydon tonight on BBC Two, Tom Jones, Amelia Fox and Steve Backshaw at 11.20 after Newsnight.